So when you're reading the book, and you should have already read the book by now, those, those the pages that were assigned on Google Classroom, you know, there's really two things that are happening at once. We're looking at energy, and I think really the book sort of starts with energy. I decided to start with forces, and so now we're kind of backtracking and talking about energy considerations. And the author offers this as a conceptual um, model for understanding rotation, where it rotates about a point of contact. I have found that most students don't don't like that, and we don't have to use that at all. Um, so I think what's a little easier is this notion that we're looking at rolling. When something is rolling without sliding, it's doing two things. It's moving in a straight line. So this is what we call translating, right? So all the particles, top, middle, and bottom, are moving along at the speed that the wheel is moving with, while at the same time, it's rotating. And when we combine those, this is where they're adding and then equals, the point of contact doesn't actually move with respect to the ground. If you think about like a car wheel rolling along the ground, you know, that's why we dealt with static friction for the tire and the road instead of kinetic. Even though the car is moving, the point of contact on the bottom of the tire is not moving with respect to the ground. So we see a zero here. Um, whereas the middle of the wheel is moving with the axle of the car, it's kind of moving with the car. The top of the wheel, however, is going past. It's always faster. And that's sort of surprising at the top of the wheel at that given instant is actually going twice the velocity of the center of mass. But if you really roll something along, even like I said, just find a roll of tape or something or a bottle and pay attention to it. That's what you really should be trying to do when you're reading the book or, you know, figuring out stuff that I'm going over in class um, is to, you know, put that kind of thing into action like I suggested earlier. So um, I want to show you something actually. This guy um, did a nice job. There's, you know, so many good physics teachers out there. Like this guy put this nice video together and this part I thought he did a good job. Here we see pure rotation and the vectors represent the tangential velocity at the edge of the wheel which we know is the nice, same right? nice. as the velocity of the center of the mass of the wheel when we're in translational motion. Here the vectors represent to move just the translational legs, motion. Right? So when you add it together. So, so it's nice and you see he's using the same book we're using. He's we using these start. diagrams. The so one? certainly, um, you know, if you were to search this, rolling as rotation and translation combined, if you want to see it, you know, a high quality production, this guy did a, did a better job than I do with my screencast videos, David Taylor. Um, and look at that. That's impressive. I'm happy when my view count gets over 50. Um, <laughs> so back to this. Here we are. So, um, you know, this again, this this gift, this very simple little gift by Low Mueller 2008. That's it's the worst gift ever, but it really I think nicely shows that as the wheel rolls along, I think the thing I tried to point out in class is how the center stays above the point of contact. And then you can kind of be like, you know what? The center goes just as far as the arc length that's unrolling which means we get to use these same equations. We're already really using them, right? So this is really, this would go with the distance that the center of the wheel moves, right? That's the theta through which the wheel turns and that's the radius of the wheel. And then instead of tangential velocity, we're really connecting the fact that the center is moving along with that point of contact. So we can use that to connect angular velocity, which we'll do that now. I'm just why I'm showing these now. And then we just use this again um, in the earlier video you watched. So that keeps coming at you. That's why this chapter really builds on this. So I'm going to uh, pause again and hip, here I am. So, you know, what really helps is if you're paying attention to the different rotational inertia formula, we're basically dealing with, with four round shapes. We're dealing with uh, the hoop, which is mr squared. We're dealing with the hollow sphere, which is two thirds mr squared. We're dealing with the, the, the solid cylinder or disc, which is one half mr squared. And then the solid sphere, which is two fifths, right? When that's the one that has the masses close to the center, it's got the smallest multiplier, right? So let's just, we, you know, since we've dealt with the cylinder and disc a lot, you know, really, the idea of what we're doing is looking at the kinetic energy of rolling as being a combination of straight line, which is our one half mv squared, plus our rotation, one half i omega squared. So for each shape, we do this, right, where we look at the total kinetic energy as being equal to the translation. So they're all equal to one half mv squared, because it's just the mass moving. Um, and then we're adding this, and then we get more specific. I'm just going to rewrite that. Um, and put in one half the shape's rotational inertia. So for a solid cylinder, the rotational inertia formula is one half mr squared. Now, like I, I kind of just 
foreshadowed, I'm going to use for the omega, I'm going to switch this to v over r, but that's getting squared, right? And you can see how that's going to end up simplifying. And good golly, you know, this guy's waiting for us to be done here, but we have a half of a half, which is a quarter, mv squared, so the total kinetic energy is three quarters mv squared. So what this means is that, you know, the total kinetic energy is in partly translation and partly rotation. In the case of the solid cylinder, it's mostly in translation, right? It's, there's actually three quarters total, right? So one of those quarters is rotation, so that means one of three is rotation. So one third of the total energy in a solid cylinder is in rotation. The other two thirds is in translation. Uh, the hoop on the other hand, um, if we just run through that real quick again, right, total kinetic energy is equal to the translational plus rotational. This one's actually pretty easy. Uh, one half, I'm going to do it slowly, one half i omega, I'm trying to go fast here. All right, so uh, thin hoop, the i is mr squared, and again, the omega, we're placing it with a v over r, so that becomes this, and the stupid r cancels out there, and we get two one-half mv squareds, right? So it, of course, works to a whole mv squared. So that's the total rolling kinetic energy of a thin hoop. Notice that the energy is spread out fitty-fitty, right, where it's spread out evenly. Um, when we go to our little table, right, that I gave you, I've already got some stuff filled out here. I meant to erase this column. Everybody's translational kinetic energy, you might have heard me say that before, is one half mv squared. Okay? And then I've figured these out on the previous page, so I've already got them inserted in there, the outcome, except <laughs> I didn't change my <laughs> I didn't actually change my clipboard there. I didn't catch that when I before I made the videos. So this one came out to one half mv squared too and that added up to mv squared. That one I didn't make a mistake. Okay, so what I want you to do is see if you can confirm these. It'll help actually if you pause and try to figure these things out. If you procrastinated too long, I'm sorry if this is like late uh, Wednesday night and you're, you know, but you, you've got to learn the physics, right? You're in a physics class. Work with me, all right? So you try to do those other two shapes. Um, I'm going to show you, right? what they come out to, and I've got these in order of increasing uh, percentage in rotational kinetic energy. And But you can see the total energy of a rolling hoop, like if you've got a hoop rolling at you, that at the same speed as, say, a solid sphere, the hoop has a lot more energy um, than the solid sphere because it's got all that rotational inertia. Um, so take a look at those checkpoints. Uh, you've got to, st you know, if you haven't done those yet, that's part of this assignment, and you're submitting uh, the completed pages of the packet, and uh, we'll see you Thursday, right? Okay, thank you.